Hello everyone, Famine here, and today I wanted to just go over my five hopes for things that I would like to see some improvement on prior to the Modern Warfare 3 launch on the 10th. Now before we jump into this, I should note that I actually really enjoyed the beta, so much so that I actually have had major problems going back to Modern Warfare 2 following the uh, Modern Warfare 3 beta ending. Um, which is really funny because I had a lot of plans to grind out the Halloween event and the Battle Pass, but compared to Modern Warfare 3, I really just have not been enjoying Modern Warfare 2 as much after the beta. Um, so take this more as feedback for the game that I actually feel like I'll really enjoy rather than me hating on the game. So the first thing I have here is visibility of enemy players versus friendly players, and kind of as a subsection of that, um, how much the players blend into the general environment. Um, so when it comes to enemy players versus friendly players, uh, it's been really hard during the beta actually being able to tell the difference between who's enemy and who's friendly. Um, I've had certain scenarios where, you know, I'm about to go out a door and then somebody pushes through the door, and sometimes it takes up to like two to three seconds to actually be able to identify, like, whether that's an enemy or a friendly. Um, which has led to a lot of scenarios, and you've seen this throughout the beta, there's been a lot of people shooting at their teammates because nobody can really identify who's a teammate and who's an enemy. I think a lot of people have even gone to the point where they're just shooting at anybody <laughs> that they see, um, just, just in case it is an enemy. I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that the name and the dot over players' heads have gotten a lot smaller and a lot more faded even since Modern Warfare 2, which has made it just a lot harder to identify who is who. So I think something to change here, and it's just very simple, is that we just change the name and the dot even back to the way it was in Modern Warfare 2, or better. Um, just give it more visibility, because as, as of right now, it's very opaque, where it's very hard to see, especially against certain backgrounds, where it is, like, basically invisible. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's the main problem going on here, and I expect that they will probably fix this by the time the game releases, hopefully. Um, it's something that they've already mentioned previously that they've been looking into, so hopefully we see an improvement on that. Um, and also, just as a subsection of this, I found it kind of hard in certain scenarios to actually be able to identify players in the environment. Um, but I know this is more on the realism side. Uh, personally, I've always enjoyed shooters where it's a little bit easier to identify people. But I know that this is kind of a realism thing where it depends on each individual COD game of how easy or hard that is to do. Um, and I think that's no, not really as much of a complaint for me here, um, because it's generally fine, but there has been certain situations, especially in certain maps like Favela, where it's sometimes hard to see and identify players, especially if they're, like, against a corner, or, like, you know, laying down in, like, grass. It's, it's very hard to see where people are sometimes. Um, yeah, I don't see them changing that, as that's more of a design, design decision. I will say something I found kind of funny is that I, as I turn my graphics down, I found it easier to actually identify players. So for anybody that's having issues kind of seeing people in general, um, yeah, apparently just turn the graphics down, it actually makes it easier to see people in the environment. So the second thing I have on this list is pack a burst, and I don't really know what to make of this issue at this point. Uh, I want to say this is a very common issue starting in Call of Duty Vanguard. I don't remember if it was a thing before that, but Vanguard is the first one that I know it was like a very major problem. And as far as I know with Vanguard, it was never resolved by the end of its lifespan. And unfortunately, we saw this again in Modern Warfare 2. Now, I will say Modern Warfare 2, it was a lot better up until about Season 4, where the issue started to become a lot worse again and kind of mimic Vanguard to some extent. Um, and again, we haven't really seen that resolved in Modern Warfare 2 either. <laughs> and unfortunately, we saw this again in the Modern Warfare 3 beta. In fact, I think it was worse in the Modern Warfare 3 beta than it was in Modern Warfare 2 when I've been playing recently. And this is really kind of an issue, and I don't know, this should not be something that is happening in any of these Call of Duty games. It doesn't really make any sense. Like, if we think back to 
you know, games from, like, Black Ops 4 or World War 2 or all of those Call of Duty games. Like, we had dedicated servers then and we never saw these issues happening like this where we were having this packet burst showing up constantly and causing us to, like, stutter around. Like, this isn't something that used to happen this commonly where it was this major of an issue. And this has a major effect on gunfights because it seems like it's not even consistent by the server. It seems like it happens to each individual player at different times. And you can tell this by the fact that if you're in a party with like a friend, they typically don't report packet burst happening at the same time that you end up having it on your screen. And this just leads to very inconsistent gunfights because, you know, if one person can get into a gunfight and then the other person has packet burst or like vice versa and it's just really frustrating because at the end of the day these servers should be stable so i want to say i hope that this issue eventually gets resolved but i'm not really holding my breath on it at this point um it's been a problem for many many call of duty games in a row now and i thought i would mention it here because at the end of the day it is one of the main things that actually causes me to kind of suffer when it comes to the gunfights. I feel like it makes them very kind of inconsistent when it comes to the connection. So yeah, I hope this issue eventually gets resolved, but I'm not holding my breath on it getting fixed as it's been an issue in Call of Duty games for quite a while now and is really something that should have been fixed by now. So the third thing on the list that I have is the spawns, and I think from what I've seen online this is kind of the number one complaint for most people, and I will say the spawns are very unstable with them moving around a lot, and being kind of super inconsistent with spawning you behind enemies, or enemies behind you, even if you've spawned recently at that spot. Sometimes it can feel so inconsistent with this uh, spawn system that it feels like you're almost playing free-for-all, where you spawn in a certain spot, and then two or three seconds later, you're suddenly surrounded by the enemy team that just spawned directly behind you on that same position. I think the most shocking thing with the spawns is that I think the map that was the most inconsistent with them was the one that was the largest, Estate, in the beta. Um, Estate just seemed very inconsistent with spawns in general, with players seeming to just jump all over the map and even like teammates spawning in very split areas like you know somebody would spawn at the dock house and then two seconds later somebody would spawn at the greenhouse and it's like okay like that that should never be happening because this basically leads to situations where you know you clear out say the enemy team and then all of a sudden they just spawn and basically are surrounding you which should never be the situation where they're being fractured out like that and I think the main offenders we saw on Estate were the Dock House, especially. Uh, people were spawning back there constantly, even if you were like very close by the, to the Dock House. Like, enemies could just spawn directly behind you and just immediately have vision on you. This also happened on the main Estate building quite a lot, with enemies spawning on the bottom floor, even if people were directly up the staircase on the top floor. And even behind the, I believe it's the C site flag on Estate, I was having a lot of people spawning there where it kind of felt like they shouldn't have been spawning there at that certain time, um, even if I was like very close by and kind of inside of that spawn. I don't know, I kind of just miss the classic Call of Duty spawn system, which I feel like we haven't seen for a, a little while. Uh, I guess for anybody that didn't play the, uh, the older Call of Duty games, um, I guess I could explain that real quick. So I think the easiest example to use here is High Rise, um, since it's also a classic Call of Duty map, and I think it's one that makes it very easy to see the difference here. Um, so basically the way that classic COD spawns used to work is that you had your side of the map and the enemy had their side of the map. In this case, the spawns for High Rise would be the two office buildings, basically. Then everywhere in the center, you know, the middle of the map, would be a mix of players. So you generally knew where enemies were coming from. You know, they're spawning in the office building that is opposite of you. And the spawns wouldn't really flip unless um, somebody pushed very heavily into the spawn. So somebody would have to basically go into the enemy's office building. And even being, you know, inside of it, it wouldn't really flip it right away. You would have to go basically, you know, pretty deep into the building, pretty far back to actually manage to get the spawns to flip. 
And in this case, then it would flip the, you know, the enemy team to the ever spawn, and then you would start spawning in this office building. Now, if, say, there is still, you know, a player on your team in the ever building, then it would have to look for kind of a different scenario. Maybe it starts spawning them in the underground tunnel in the building that you're pushing into. Maybe it decides to spawn them in a little bit more of the middle of the map, but for the most part, this is how the spawns would be. So like I said before, you would have to push in very, pretty far into the spawn, and even sometimes it would still stick, you know, it would just spawn people off to the side in like a different part of the spawn, depending on how wide that spawn is on the uh, the enemy player's side. But the way the spawns work now, um, it's very lenient, I guess is the best way to describe it. If you push an enemy spawn, you don't have to go anywhere near the spawn really anymore. It is very lenient on when it's going to decide to say, okay, this player is not spawning in a safe position anymore. We have to spawn them somewhere else. Um, and this leads to a lot of inconsistencies where, you know, you, you should be expecting them to spawn in that office building across from you, but then all of a sudden they're spawning behind you because they're spawning in the middle of the map in the underground tunnel area. Um, we've seen this. There's a lot more action going on in the underground tunnel area than there was before. Um, and that's because there's just so many people spawning in the underneath area now due to the spawn system and the way that it works nowadays. So yeah, I really wish that we could just see kind of a classic spawn system again from COD where, you know, it's very obvious where players are coming from. Um, and like I said, I don't even think this is a problem for, like, spawn trapping. I can understand where they don't want that to be a thing. Um, but it doesn't have to be to the extent of the leniency that we have right now where, you know, it's flipping people very quickly. Um, because this just leads to a lot of players spawning kind of in the middle portions of the map than there ever was in you know, these maps originally, or any of the older Call of Duty games. Also, for anybody that hasn't seen Exclusive Ace's video on analyzing the spawn system, I think that when I watched that video, it is basically a carbon copy of exactly how I felt about the spawns during this beta. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that video. I'll leave it in the description down below. The fourth thing I have is the health regeneration rate. I think this one, again, is a very simple fix, so I could be wrong, but as of right now, I think the health regeneration rate seems identical to the way it was in Modern Warfare 2. Could be wrong, haven't tested it, but it seems like it's identical from what I've been able to tell. And with the speed of the game being turned up and, you know, the general movement being a lot faster than it was in Modern Warfare 2, I feel like the base health regeneration rate is way too slow <laughs> right now for the speed of the game, it causes it to be very hard to, you know, survive more than one gunfight because, you know, if you take a decent amount of damage from the first person, even if you hide for, you know, quite a little bit, you're still usually not in the health regeneration section yet. So I think this is a pretty simple fix for me at least, is you just increase this health regeneration rate by an okay amount to be able to actually make this, uh, this increase in the mobility uh, match, um, because yeah, as of right now, it, it takes so long to regen the health regeneration rate, um, which also slows down the gameplay on top of that. One thing I'll mention here is we don't know all the perks in the game yet, so it's possible that we have a perk um, instead to increase the health regeneration rate, similar to ICU from Call of Duty Ghosts, or more than likely what they would probably use is Quick Fix from Modern Warfare 19 and 2022. But personally, even if this, you know, perk exists where we do get an increased health regeneration rate, I would like to see them increase the base amount still, because I think the base amount is just way too slow the way it is right now. But even if we do have this perk option, I think the default is still too slow. So depending on if, this, if we have this perk uh, or not, to increase the health regen rate. I think, I think that should max match for how much they increase the current base regen. So if we have the perk, you know, increase it by a smaller amount. If we don't have the perk as an option, then increase it by a larger amount. And I think the final thing here is the weird inconsistent TTK, TTD, or time to death. Um, this is potentially kind of connected to pack and burst, but it seems to happen even in cases where pack and burst is not on the screen um or it could even be an effect of mid 
beta nerfs to certain weapons. I'm not really sure at this point, which is why I have it a lot lower down here, but there was just a lot of weird inconsistency I found. Um, when I first tried the Modern Warfare Free beta on PlayStation 5 for the first weekend, um, the first couple of games I had, I was getting like seven or eight hit markers on some people while they were like four-shotting me, and I didn't really understand why, but after those first initial games, um, it just kind of stopped occurring suddenly, and my gun felt like it was, you know, killing at the same speed as enemy players' weapons were. And then this kind of happened later in the beta too, especially with the ACR. I don't know if it got a nerf towards the end of the beta, but towards the end of the beta, I was getting a lot of hit markers with it, especially at longer ranges, where in certain scenarios, I was getting like seven or eight hit markers and people were still surviving. <laughs> Um, which actually led me to start using the Bass B over the ACR because that seemed to be a lot more consistent than the ACR was being for me at the time. So yeah, I don't know what the cause of this really is, but I thought I would mention it here as kind of just another thing. I don't think this is that major of an issue because, I, like I said, it was very inconsistent where it didn't feel like it was always happening, but it is just something I thought I would mention here. And that is it. So these are the five main things I would like to see kind of modified following the Modern Warfare Free beta. I will say again that I did really enjoy the Modern Warfare Free beta. Um, it basically killed my interest in Modern Warfare 2 uh, following it, and I'm kind of just holding out until Modern Warfare Free is released at this point. So yeah, really looking forward to Modern Warfare Free's launch to see how everything goes. And we will be having one more video prior to that launch to talk about one other concern I have coming up that is unrelated to the Modern Warfare Free beta. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching if you stuck around throughout this. And I hope to see you guys on another video.